Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. The single best idea. It has been an extraordinary day. I want to start with something I have never seen. I've been doing this for four, five, six years, and I've never, ever seen what we saw today. And as we tape this single best idea at our world headquarters, I want to make clear that there is speculation and rumor and uncertainty. But I do think I can paint for those of you across the nation and, quite frankly, at worldwide as we see Russia in a prisoner swap reported by our Jennifer Jacobs uh, with allies, including the United States. I've seen numbers, thank you, Moscow Times, of 20 to 30 people. The Telegraph has that statistic. I believe Jennifer Jacob has it as well. The partition that occurred this morning between cable TV and, frankly, us to an extent, reporting the rumors, the speculation, the minimal facts that Jennifer Jacobs had in front of her, and the newspapers in America, which had a thundering silence. And this was this nuance here of released or to be released. And it really goes down to the nuance the fears in the uh, tension that you see within a prisoner swap. I've never seen it like I saw it on this Thursday uh, in Russia and across uh, Europe and America as well. We had wonderful guests. I uh, can't say enough about it. What a generous conversation with Wei Li on China. Uh, her stunning statistic that she looks for a 3% handle. She and BlackRock, I should say, look for a 3% handle of economic growth at some point. That's game-changing for the Pacific Rim, to say the least. But also, with price up and yield down between long maturity and short maturity, Wei Li of BlackRock. Well, if you look at the hedge fund positioning, absolutely. Um, uh, a lot of the speculative positions went from short uh, bonds to long bonds, but I would uh, observe that front end of the curve has done better than the back end of uh, the curve. So mainly in response to kind of markets pricing in more cuts. But our concern for the back end of the curve, especially over a longer term horizon, still um, stays, which is a higher fiscal trajectory, higher term premium, which currently is still in a negative territory. And literally, as I tape this, way, Leah BlackRock there with a 4.02, 4.03, 10-year yield. Literally, we tape this, folks. For those of you that know New York City, they have a special bunker below Home Depot where we tape uh, all of my work, also the surveillance caskets down there as well. Someday we'll be needing that. Uh, but the answer is, moments ago, we saw 3.99% on the 10-year yield. That is remarkable. Uh, a single best idea. Shout out to Bob Michael of J.P. Morgan and his team that have had that tendency. Others as well. David Rosenberg up in Toronto. But a special shout out to Ian Lingen of BMO Capital Markets, who's just been absolutely brilliant on the movement of yield lower. The 10-year yield moments ago here, uh, Thursday, let me get the surveillance watch out. Um, it, it's got, you see, it's got Charlie Brown on it. Uh, 10, 10.02 a.m. Uh, is where we see the 3.99% yield. What's that going to do to your mortgage at rate? The mortgage rate is something the Fed looks at. A lot of criticism. Cam uh, Harvey at uh, Duke University was really something that they heated in his criticism of the Fed. Uh, we've had generous time with the former vice chairman of the Federal Reserve System, uh, Richard Clarida. He, of course, of Columbia University and, uh, <laughs> excuse me, advising at PIMCO. And, well, there's a lot to talk about. And what we talked about in the Fed decides and what we talked about this morning was the difference. Everybody's happy and in an agreement at the American Federal Reserve System, where at the Bank of England, they argue 5-4 decision today, Richard Clarida on the dissent of the Bank of England. Well, I will say that the Bank of England, certainly beginning with Merv, my good friend uh, and mentor Mervyn King 30 plus years ago, 
Uh, it was a point of pride that their culture did not discourage dissents. And indeed, I think there was one or two meetings when Mervyn was outvoted. Um, in this case, it was five to four. But when the chief economist uh, votes, it, it definitely gets the it, it gets the uh, headline. Sure, there there are dissents uh, at at the Fed. During my time, we had several meetings where there were three dissents. Uh, but it is the case that in the gr post Greenspanian era that you refer <laughs> to, or uh, Greenspan and then post Greenspan. Dissents among governors have been pretty rare on monetary uh, policy, well, and that that's an entire another show we could, I won't spend time talking about why that is. You need to come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay. Richard Claret, I maybe we'll get him for day three and do a hat trick of great economic uh, perspective. Can't say enough about some of the distinguishing features of former Federal Reserve officials. Major shout out to Bill Dudley, who graced us with his presence for the Fed Decides. Bill Dudley, with that essay 10 days ago in Bloomberg Opinion, heated the Fed should act now. We hope you act by subscribing. To YouTube, Bloomberg Podcast is the best way to get all of our good conversation on Apple CarPlay and on Android Auto as well. And on Apple Podcasts, it's single best idea.